Charlie Bubble Time, Dominic Steele and Anderson Tice to be back from holidays. We had a lovely week up at Harvey Bay in Queensland last week and just great to be back at Village Church yesterday. Um, on holidays, I read this new book by uh, Brian Rosner, about to be released, uh, called How to Find Yourself While Looking Inward is Not the Answer. Really good book speaking to the cultural zeitgeist of our moment. Um, now, do look out for that. Um, also, while I was away, I was reflecting on an address that I've been asked to give at a minister's conference in August, and the conference is about leadership. And uh, I've been reflecting on a Pastor's Heart interview a few weeks ago, where Matt Fuller spoke about 2 Corinthians 12, my weakness is good for you. And I've been mulling speaking on that passage at this conference, and um, if you might indulge me, I thought I might just spend a few mornings digging around in that passage and thinking about it. And Paul starts off in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 16 and he says, I repeat, let no one consider me a fool. Now, there have been people in the church who think Paul is a fool and there have been people in the church, factions in the church who've been saying that and there are others who are being persuaded that the guy who founded the church is a fool. Now, just feel that with me for a moment. How would you have felt Paul planted this church? He went there where there was no presence of Christ and um, he's led them to Christ he was their father in Christ and now he has the pain of them turning against him and scorning him and it is an intense pain I repeat let no one consider me a fool but then he says um, if you do at least accept me as a fool so that I can also boast a little for the sake of the rhetorical exercise Paul casts himself in the role of his opponents what they've been doing, he will do. They boast, I'm going to boast. They've been boasting of self-confidence in the flesh. So will he. Verse 17, what I am saying in this matter of boasting, I don't speak as the Lord would, but as it were foolishly, since many boast according to the flesh. Paul is absolutely clear. What he's about to do is not speaking like Jesus. How does Jesus speak? What is Jesus' mindset? Oh, Philippians 2. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Jesus journeyed from the throne of God to the disgrace of the crucifixion. Paul is saying, I'm not speaking like Jesus. That's what he's saying. I'm not speaking like that. And so what Paul is going to do for an uncomfortable, awkward moment, he's going to speak like his opponents, speak like his critics. And actually there's a mixture of sarcasm and irony in what he says. I will also boast, for you being so wise, gladly put up with fools. Now, this is biting. You will indulge me playing the fool since you put up with fools. You put up with these new pastors in Corinth. They do this foolish boasting thing. But I'm going to too. Now, look what he says about them in verse 20. It's pretty full on. In fact, you put up with it if someone enslaves you, if somebody exploits you, if someone takes advantage of you, if someone is arrogant towards you, if someone slaps you in the face. Paul is directly critiquing the new ministers in Corinth, his critics, and he's calling them out, verse 20. He's saying these new guys enslave, exploit, take advantage, are arrogant, slap them in the face. And he's saying the new guys have done that to the Corinthian church. Now, what is Christian ministry? What is the minister of Christ to do? And now I get this passage has an immediate application to me. But if you're involved in ministry, village or in another place in any level, um, I mean, if you're not at all involved in ministry, this perhaps wouldn't be obvious, but... Um, uh, we have such a broad base in our church of who's actually doing what. And in some way, well, a very significant percentage of our church in some way is leading something. So chapter 10, back in 2 Corinthians 10, there was a verse by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. And, um, and then there's this line here in Philippians 2, um, the humility of Christ, that he who was at the right hand of the Father made himself nothing. Christian ministry is about self-sacrifice, is about imitating Jesus who laid down his life in service of others. And so it's a complete contrast to a verb like enslave or exploit or take advantage of or slap in the face or arrogant. And so what Paul is stating is that the motive and actions of the false 
new guys is the exact antithesis of the godly minister of Christ Jesus. And they've behaved with the opposite heart to the meekness and gentleness of Christ. The minister who is a genuine minister of Christ will not be taking advantage of his people. He will be pouring himself, himself out for the people in the way Christ did. His life will be a life of self-sacrifice following the example of Christ's self-sacrifice. And Paul says these opponents are self-seeking opponents, not self-sacrifice people. Now, um, my experience um, of the ministry of Jesus that I've been doing among Village Church, and I've, I've watched other people in ministry, the key currency that a minister has with the people of the church that I have with you is trust. And um, if you were to think that I was not acting for your good, if you were to think that I was acting to further my personal agenda at your expense, if you don't trust me that I'm acting for your good, then I, I've lost it. And so in my heart, in my actions, I am to be constantly checking that I'm acting for the good of the people of the church, a village. And so when Paul says of these guys that they enslave, exploit, take advantage, are arrogant, slap in the face, the, the paradigm of the Bible of Christ to the church, of pastor to the church, of husband to the wife, of parent to the child, it's to be self-sacrificial service. And the antithesis is to enslave, to exploit, to take advantage, to be arrogant, to slap in the face. So Paul's leadership, he says, is servant leadership, whereas these guys have an exploitative leadership. Now, how would these comments have landed in the church in Corinth? Well, that's for tomorrow's daily Bible time. Um, why don't I lead in prayer? Father, we just pray that the ministry that we engage in would be with a heart of service, with a heart of self-sacrifice, with a heart of putting the others first. And we pray that that would be deep in our mindset and in every aspect of those of us who are involved in Christian leadership. And, uh, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us this Monday morning, 30th of May on Daily Bible Time. See you tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning. God bless.